Let us pray. Father, we thank you so much for who you are and all that you mean to us. We thank you for this season of Lent, this time of remembering and reflecting upon your sacrifice that you were willing to lay down your life for each one of us. Father, help us to always be mindful of your sacrifice. And in so doing, to be willing to live sacrificially ourselves. This morning, we ask that you would help us to sacrifice our time. To come to this place and this moment ready to listen, ready to hear, ready to respond to your word. Open our ears to hear afresh the word that you would speak to us this morning. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We read this morning from John's Gospel, chapter 11, verses 17 through 27. And in honor of the Gospel lesson, I invite those who are able to please stand. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would have not died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of Him. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to Him, I know that He will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in Me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Little boy was raised in a Christian household. Mom and dad did everything they could to keep Christ at the center of their home. One night before supper, the little boy had been out playing and the mom said, now you need to go wash your hands and be sure to get all the germs off. The little boy was heard to say as he left the room, germs in Jesus, germs in Jesus. That's all ever here around here and I haven't seen either one of them yet. Do you remember when you were younger? Younger in your life, possibly younger in your faith, you believed practically everything you heard. It didn't take much as long as it was somebody in a position of authority, maybe a teacher, maybe a parent, maybe maybe someone else that was in leadership. They said the word and you believed. No questions asked. But then over time, we began to mature. And our belief system became a little more sophisticated. And we begin to wonder, we begin to even possibly doubt some of the things we were hearing. I know with my daughter Croft, when she was just a few years younger, I could say anything and she would believe it. She would say, really? And there was this sense of wonder, this sense of excitement. Now, at the mature age of six, I can say something to her and she'll go, really? I don't believe that. Or in other words, my six-year-old is already saying to her dad, give me a break. That's kind of the way it is with our faith journeys. though. When we, we first meet Christ, we become Christian, we believe. We believe what we read in the Scriptures of the Old and New Testament. We have no doubt, no questions. But somewhere along that life's journey, our journey with Christ, there are times we begin to doubt. We begin to wonder. We even begin to question. 
Is this really the truth? Can I believe this? Can I believe that, that Noah really gathered all the animals of the world two by two and put them on that ark for 40 days while it rained and it lived there until the waters receded and the land was dry again? Can I believe that? Can I believe that Moses really walked up to that Red Sea and parted the waters through the hand of God and the, the, the land of Israel walked across on dry land can I believe in the virgin birth? Can I believe that I'm going to have everlasting life? I hear these things. I know these things. But do I believe these things? It's been said that time is one of the things that leads to doubt. When we have time on our hands, we begin to doubt more and more, it seems. We have time to question. We have time to wonder. We have time to reflect. Stories told of a, a rich man who was somewhat eccentric in his ways, and he would throw these big parties for all of his rich and famous friends. He invited them over to the house, and they knew it would be something special. They knew really they didn't know what to expect because this guy was always doing something different. On this occasion, he announced about halfway through the party, he says, there's a fabulous prize for the person that can swim all the way across my pool. Great, that sounds good. I'll do it. And then he says, one catch, there's an alligator in the pool. Everybody began to wonder. They looked at the water. They knew the prize would be fabulous if it was coming from this guy. They had their doubts of whether or not they should jump in. As they stood around, it was somewhat quiet, but then they heard this splash. And here was this man in the pool swimming across the pool and they were amazed that he would have the courage to do that, would actually do that in order to get this prize. He swam all the way across the pool and they all greeted him at the other side and said, man, that was wonderful. You're going to win the prize. And he says, I don't care about the blessed prize. I want to know the name of the man that pushed me into this pool. Our doubts are okay sometimes. Our doubts and our questions will help us grow in our faith if we do it in a, a sense of being open to the Spirit and what God will inform us to do. As we listen and we question, we grow deep in our faith, but our questions can also cause us to go in a different direction. They can cause us to become cynical and, and doubtful. And Rather than building up our faith, we find our faith being knocked down. Faith becomes real. Faith becomes real when we take our doubts and put them into action. We can sit around and wonder. We can sit around and, and, and look at all the alligators in the pool and say, I just can't go there. I can't jump into that water. But God, through His grace and His power and His mercy and His strength and His courage will cause us to move into action and to do things we thought we never could do on our own, but we do them because we know, folks, there's a fabulous prize at the end. Eyes offered to all, offered to all who believe. The price is all we have to do is believe. And the prize is the hope and the promise of everlasting life. Martha was a woman of action. She and Mary, her sister Mary, had prepared the body of Lazarus, their brother, and put him in the tomb. He'd been there now for 40 days, and as good Jewish women did back then, they sat in the house in mourning. During the time of mourning, the, woman were, the women were to be seated in the house. But then Martha hears that, that Jesus is coming. She hears He's coming, and you have to think that Martha, though, had spent some time with all that sitting, wondering, Where's Jesus? Jesus knew that Lazarus was sick. Why didn't He come? Lazarus would have lived if He'd only been here. So she had her doubts even about Jesus. Jesus who's with a close friend of the family. Wondering why He hadn't shown up. Why He'd been so distant. But now... But now she hears again that Jesus is, is coming. 
He's, he's coming down the road to the house. And rather than sit there like a good Jewish woman should have, she got up and she moved. She took action. She went to see Jesus. It was her faith that moved her there. Her faith that caused her to go there, knowing in some sense that Jesus, with all of His healing powers, couldn't make her brother well. But I believe she went there, and this is something we all need to hear, because she knew Jesus could do something. Jesus could come into that moment and make a difference. And she believed that. And so she went to see Him. And Jesus immediately says to her these words. I'm the resurrection and the life. Then He asked the question of her. And He asked of all of us, Do you believe? That moment, Martha realized, even though her tradition taught her, the Jewish tradition taught her, yes, there would be a day of resurrection. It was a day that would come during the Messianic age. But for the Jews, the Messiah had not yet come yet. For the Jews, the Messiah has still not yet come. They're still waiting for that Messiah that's going to bring total peace, total prosperity, total order to the world. But there's a day in the Jewish tradition that there will be a day of resurrection when the Messiah comes. And Martha, being the good Jewish woman she was, has this transformational moment when she realized that the person in front of her is indeed the Messiah. He's no longer a friend of the family. He's no longer a good prophet. He's no longer an excellent teacher. This is the Messiah, the one who is the giver of life standing before her. And we see in that moment, in the Scripture lesson this morning, Martha transformed. Martha becomes a new creation. She's moved beyond all that she knows about Jesus. All that she knows about her tradition to belief in Jesus the Christ. To belief in Jesus the Messiah. To belief in Jesus who is the resurrection and the life. What do you believe? Do you believe that the same Holy Spirit that worked wonders at Pentecost can work wonders in your life now? Do you believe that Jesus gives us the power to become sons and daughters of God? Do you believe that Jesus is the resurrection and the life and that that resurrection power that He offered to Lazarus, He can offer to each one of us in this moment. He can take our stale lives, our defeated lives, our troubled lives, our dead lives, our dry bones life. As He says back in Ezekiel, He can take those dry bones and breathe life into them. We can have life right now that's resurrected and renewed. We don't have to wait for eternal life to come. Eternal life begins in the moment you say, Jesus, I believe. Give me life now. Give me the abundant life I'm searching for. Give me peace. Give me hope. Lord, I believe. You know, we hear all this. You're hearing it again. Probably for the umpteenth time you're hearing it again. You know these things about Christ. He offers us life. He offers us abundant life. You know these things, but the question, the overriding question this morning is, do you believe these things? You know, throughout my life, throughout my life, when I've come upon a difficult circumstance or a crisis in my life or, or just needed encouragement and empowerment for the moment, people have been placed in my path that have encouraged me and given me that support I needed, have said to me in no uncertain terms, Tom, I believe in you. And you know, it's those people that I remember the most. It's those people that I'm closest to. It's those people that I want to be near. It's those people people that I believe in myself. Hear this this morning. God in Jesus Christ says, I believe in you. He will give us the strength. He'll give us the courage. 
He'll give us the determination we need to overcome any crisis, to grow in our faith, to, to be new creations, to live life to its fullest. He'll give us the hope that some of us need to believe in ourselves. To believe that you are indeed special in the eyes of God. And that through Christ Jesus we can be transformed even further to be people of the resurrection. Easter people who anticipate and hope one day that life eternal will be that fabulous prize that all of us will claim. Jesus is the resurrection. Jesus is life. He believes in you. Do you believe in Him?